So to begin with, let's just start with the load forecast. The blue line is the growth of the residential customers. And as you can see, it's gone up from about 33,000 to 36,000 in the 10 years that we're looking at. So we've had kind of a steady growth in the residential customers, and we expect that to increase. But at the same time, the average use per residential customer has been flat and is kind of decreasing. It jumps around a little with weather effects. So if you've, you've got growth of people going up, but usage per person going down. Similarly, with commercial customers, they've gone from about 5,600 up to about 6,400, but the use per commercial customer is also going down a little bit. Now that going down a little bit is probably from efficiency. There's been efficiency in all kinds of things going on. And for, from the people who are installing some photovoltaics on their houses and commercial establishments. So that would drive those averages down a little bit, as well as perhaps the climate making things using a little less electrical power here and there. So if you look at the annual energy usage now, not the growth and stuff, the annual, annual energy usage over the last 10 years, you will see that at the top is residential. It's been going up slightly, kind of hit a point of peak in 2013, and it's been going down slightly. Similar to commercial, been, and um, the last one on the bottom is the other classes like irrigation and street lights and stuff. That's been pretty darn flat. Okay, and the energy usage. And so if you look from the very beginning of the line, for residential, for instance, to the very end of the line, there is a slight growth there. Now, if you, we add on that our largest class, industrial users, you can see that it pushes the other classes down. It's above those, the numbers are higher, and then the, the um, axis starts at 200 gigawatt hours per year in this case. The industrial usage was growing pretty rapidly until 2010 and then dropped off and has been slightly decreasing since then. The key reason, I think, for the industrial usage drop-off has been the fracking revolution that's caused uh, gas prices in other areas to be more competitive than they are here. And so there's been a reduction in what's been going on in our area. Hard to predict what will go on with that, and since it's such a big driver, what changes there will change our usage probably more than anything else from year to year. So if you add all those up, it's the red line on the top is our total energy usage. And it's what kind of tracks the industrial because the other classes are pretty flat. So it's gone up and then gone down. But you can see that we went above the 1,000 gigawatt hour per year number for quite a few years. And now we've dropped below that. But when people ask us how much energy we use, that's kind of a nice round number that we typically throw out at that 1,000 a year. All right. So summarizing the data of the last year, the industrial's been going down, commercial's been going up slightly, and residential's been going up slightly. So let's look at a couple of other things with that, demand and load factor, because you're trying to look at how prices might change in the future. Those are other things that would be important to you. So our Demand, monthly demand, for seven years of data, every one of those lines it represents one year. The, light, the, the um, narrower lines, the very light gray one at the top is 2010, and then jump down to the darkest green one, which tends to be to the bottom. So the, this shows a couple of things. Both the dark lines tend to be going down, so our annual peak our peak demands are going down some. And as we know, there's a seasonal aspect to our demand. If you look in the winter time to the far left and right of the graph, you'll see those are always higher. Summertime, there's a little bit of a peak and our lowest usages are in the spring and the fall when we have that delightful weather. So this is kind of a weather effect going on here. The other way of looking at it then is just to say, what was the annual maximum demand for that entire year, every year over the last seven years. And you can see that's been slightly decreasing. It was up around 170, and now it's dropped down to around 150. And if you look at the annual average demand, that means you average up all the months, 
the difference between those two bars kind of gives you a feel for what the load factor is. If there's an enormous difference, you would have a poor load factor. If they're pretty close together, you have a high one. Because load factor can be defined as if you take the very peak in a year or the very peak in a month, and you say you were to operate at that rate for the entire year or the entire month, whatever that period is, and then divide that by the actual amount you actually operate, that gives you the load factor. In other words, if you're operating flat out 100% of the time, you'd have 100% load factor, but you don't. You go up and down, and the more you go up and down, the more aggravating it is to those who are providing you power, and it has a, a cost-effective sense. So that's one way of looking at it, and then to drill right into the load factor itself, if you look at it on an annual basis, that's taking some kind of your peak of the entire year and then the, the average usage you use, we're running around 75%. It's, it's been moving around a little bit, but back in 2010, it's virtually what it is now in 2017. And that's a darn good load factor for co-ops. Big reason is our industrial load's just pretty flat all the time. That helps a lot. But we've done a lot as a co-op co to kind of encourage residential users to use power off peak and there's more that we can do with that. So we probably, as we continue to have these tools, we'll be able to drive that demand factor up a little bit, which could make us a more attractive target for selling power to us. And then if we look at just the last year, 2017, on a month, monthly basis now, our monthly low factor is running around 85%. Some months a little lower, some months a little higher. Okay. So if we now say, what are we going to predict going forward, knowing what we've done in the past and using a lot of other data that we discussed in these meetings a long time? Well, one thing you know about predictions is when you make them, they're going to be wrong. It just gives you some way to put some graphs out in the future to decide what might be going on and how you might be able to price things into the future. Well, we don't know exactly what's going on with industrial and those important, so we're just going to say that's going to be flat for now until we get a good reason to change it to something else. Commercial, we do think it's going to be increasing a little bit, small increase. Residential's interesting because there's several things going on there. One, we know we're going to get more people building, more people growing in the county. We know there's population growth coming. But two, at the same time, people are putting more photovoltaics on their house, probably at an increasing rate. So if you just combine those two things, growth from people moving in, but more photovoltaics, you probably have a slight decrease in usage. But the other thing we discovered is that all predictions point to pretty substantial electric vehicle growth. And Bob will be talking about this quite a, more, a bit more, and he has um, data on that. But that's going to probably drive some of the usage up. So when you combine those things together, you get some driving up in the residential. And for the, yep. Yeah. Who, who's making the predictions? Where did you get the predictions from? I would say it's a prediction that's sort of from the group based on some information Dan provided, information Bob gathered. There's no one person that's doing it. Pardon me? You, were you saying earlier that all of those tables and stuff is available? So yes, they're all so from spreadsheets. Like see exactly kind of where that all came from. That's right. That. Those spreadsheets would be available. And this, of course, presentation, well, those are just a compendium of, as you can imagine, a lot of numbers. OK. Um, we're thinking our demand is probably going to remain about flat. We know we're going to get more people. We know we've got growth going on. But we're hoping with some of our demand management, we'll be able to kind of keep that flat. And a load factor we expect with things like batteries and our new smart meters being able to perhaps have some interaction with what's going on in homes, electric water heaters, ETS systems, those kind of things. We can actually drive the demand up. So we're thinking that might happen in the future. Load drive load factor up, excuse me, yes. So just to then throw a chart as what our growth in the future might look like, well, not much. It's We're saying it's staying pretty flat, except for the blue line, which is residential, which we think is going to start going up and out years as the EV impact is more important. So our total usage is, we're saying, is pretty flat and then going up some. So that's just sort of the rough predictions where we're at. 